if we all bought purely on price, Mercedes Benz wouldn't exist, BMW and Audi wouldn't exist. But they do, and that's a growing part of the market. Mm -hmm. So what people buy or spend their money on is a, is a way for them actually to express themselves, their status, and about making them feel good. Mm -hmm. And if we can help that shopping experience make them feel even better, then I think we're, we're doing the right thing. Simon Fawfield's with us and he's CEO of Equal Strategy and that's a customer experience consultancy. Uh, very interesting ways in which they help uh, their clients, of course, uh, draw in the crowds to the stores and, of course, uh, help you open your wallets and purses and handbags uh, to make that purchase. How about that? Um, and if you have a question for Simon, you are more than welcome to call in as we talk about brand atmospherics today in the living room. The number to reach us and Simon is 669-11938. Uh, Let's continue to look at... Uh, you know, how uh, organizations, businesses, retail stores, and even hotels uh, go about using fragrances. You, you have brought in a mini briefcase of sorts. Uh, no documents or laptops in there, but uh, you have a little bit of a, a tray of uh, scents and fragrances and small little bottles are very pretty there. And you, you're telling me that um, one of the hotel chains, uh, the Marriott uh, chain, actually uses a certain uh, fragrance across all its hotels, not just in Singapore, across all its hotels? It's a global initiative that has kicked off about two weeks ago. Mm. And Brand Aroma, who's our fragrancing partner, um, they're one of the approved suppliers. And so we have a selection of six different fragrances that the hotel is allowed to choose. But also we have Shangri-La, who, across all of their business hotels in Asia have actually rolled out and been using this fragrance about the last year mm. as a way to represent Shangri-La's mystique. So why don't you have a smell of this? OK, I'm just going to lean over and... Uh... Hmm. How would you describe this? You're, you're prob probably better at describing scents Well, to keep things simple, it's very sophisticated, it's yep. very upmarket, mm. and it smells expensive. It and does, does. what they wanted to achieve was was ultimately that, because that's how Shangri-La is positioned in the marketplace. Mm. If you were to travel to Raffles City, and on the ground floor near the Prego restaurant, there's an art gallery called Ode to Art. And we recently installed there our system. And with the being an art gallery, the big ticket items, and it's, it's a very sophisticated environment. And what they wanted to do was to use a fragrance that was very elegant and sophisticated as well. Right. And I had the smell of that one. It smelled like a, a lady's perfume. That's right. Lots of lots. And of that's why it's elegant, you said. Exactly, right? You know, and it's these fragrances have a blend of between 20 to 45 different ingredients. And this is a way, actually, to make um, a fragrance that doesn't smell predominantly like pine or something very simple. Mm. It was something very economical that you'll find in a lot of these squirt, squirt dispensers you have on the... And a, a lot of different outlets. What we actually have here is a, a fragrance that's very much nearly a fine fragrance. A lot of care has been put into creating these, and we have a way where we can actually turn the liquid fragrance into a dry vapor. We pump that into the air conditioning system, mm -hmm. and by mixing with that the air conditioning feed, it enables us to provide a very sort of even, consistent fragrance level throughout the whole store okay. or within the designated area. So um, that's what we have happening at, at Odes to Art. Now, if you were to travel into Citroen, mm -hmm. we have a fragrance there. Opening which a is, bottle there, you got... Which is very fruity. This is Citroen the Ring Company. That's right. Hmm. All right. Now, what's interesting was there was a study carried out by, by Nike in the States, and they had two identical sets of trainers... Mm in two rooms next to each other, and they found that customers actually preferred to um, preferred the, the trainers that had been fragranced and were prepared to spend more money for the slightly fragranced trainers, not knowing that they had been fragranced, but in their subconsciousness, they actually preferred the, the fragrance trainers to the unfragranced and were prepared to spend 10 to $15 more. Very interesting. Well, we have fragranced our airwaves as well, just so our listeners will be tempted to stay on with us uh, because the news is up next. Uh, but definitely more aromatic conversations coming out of the living room as we continue our chat with Simon Forfield uh, with us this hour on 938 Live. Stay tuned. 938 Live. 938 Live gets you talking. 
jazzing up your day with a touch of soul. The Living Room on 938 Live. Yes, one of our mini taglines for this talk show, jazzing up your day. Jazz, uh, would jazz be a good choice for your business, your retail store, your hotel reception? Hmm. We'll find out because in the living room today, Simon Forfield is my guest and he is CEO of Visionary Customer Experience Consultancy called Equal Strategy. You can visit them at www.equalstrategy.com and uh, he is in a business where they're able to you know, help clients uh, pick out um, scents, uh, SC. E-N-T-S, yes, smells, aromas uh, that would actually uh, complement their business, their brand. It's called Brand Atmospherics. Not only about uh, what people smell, but also what people hear. We're talking about music as well in the living room for the remainder of this hour. And uh, we'll be finding out more about uh, jazz. I mentioned about jazz just a while ago. So Simon, is jazz uh, somewhat popular for businesses, especially if they want to get customers spending or staying longer? Yes, it really depends on what that company who, who they are, what mm. they're selling, who their target customer is, and the sort of mood that they want to create. So if jazz, people generally, people associate jazz with creating an upmarket, sophisticated mood and feel and atmosphere. Mm. So if a, for example, if a sports shop wanted to be using music proactively mm. to create the right mood and environment, I wouldn't necessarily recommend jazz, mm-hmm. but something that has a lot more energy about it. If you had an environment where you were catering to a segment of the market where you'd like people to be sitting around having wine and cigars, then maybe jazz would complement that sort of environment. So this is one of the the factors that we take on board when we're talking to our clients. I mean, for example, Courts. Um, they, in their electrical department, at so their mega store, mm. we use high energy music because there's a lot of energy and adrenaline associated with technology. Mm. But when you actually go down into their furniture department, the living room set, the living room set, you want people to relax. You know, you want people to slow down. And there we actually use some low tempo jazz, some chill out music, and that slows people down. And we can use music tempo the same way to control the flow of customers and get them to sort of slow down, relax, unwind, if that environment is what you want to achieve. I believe you have an example about a supermarket as well? Yes, that's right. There was a, there was a study carried out by some MBA undergraduates, mm. and over a six-week period, they were looking into the effects of music and the impact that had on revenue, or creating revenue. Right? Mm. And what they did over a six-week period, they tracked the number of customers entering the store, the speed that they moved around the store, the number of items they purchased, Mm. and actually how much money they spent. And they compared the effects of low-tempo music against high-tempo music against no music at all. And they found that between high-tempo music and no music, there was about a 4% variance in sales Mm. revenue. But when they looked at low-tempo music, they found that the revenue had actually increased by 38.2%. That's a and lot. That's, that's a lot. It's phenomenal. I mean, if, if cold storage could increase their revenue by 38.2%, I think they'd be extremely happy. Right? There you go, trying to plug. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah. they then looked into how did that actually come about, and they, they went down into the data, and they realised that when low-tempo music was being played... Mm. Customers actually moved at a pace slower than the music. They became more impulsive. They purchased more items and they spent more money. So when they're moving slower, they become more impulsive, right? They're relaxed. Yeah. When you're relaxed, you're open to... You don't think very much. That's it. You're, you're, just, <laughs> you're just following your, your, your mood, aren't you? And you tend to be a lot more impulsive. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Uh, we also want to talk about banks because uh, banks would be another group of uh, clients that uh, your uh, organization actually uh, does a consultancy for. Uh, what about banks? How do they sound like or smell like? Okay, OCBC, we have some of their private banking branches. I think we have half a dozen in, in Malaysia at the moment. Mm. And for the private banking branches, we provide classical and jazz music because it creates a very upmarket and sophisticated mood. Yeah, so when you go up the elevator and you, you come out on the mezzanine floor and it's, you know, for private banking, it isn't just a matter of you have private banking logo there. It feels very sophisticated in that market. It makes you feel like a high net worth individual. That's right. Okay. Yeah, if you go downstairs to the mass market, we're using music there that's got a, a, a 
appeals to a broader mm. demographic. It's a lot more energy in there. It's a lot more, a lot more fun. And um, really, this is another way to help companies like OCBC create, you know, differentiation between their products and service offering. Mm. We are also we're, we're talking to one of the big Singapore banks at the moment, and what we're looking to do is to add an Asian element to their business, both through sound and through smell, and that's that's a little project we're, we're working on in the meantime, so I okay. can't go into too much detail there. I'll keep my ears and nose uh, out for that uh, when it happens. To be brand-centric, of course, uh, it's got to be tailor-made, and of course, tailor-made scents and tailor-made music.